Kate is Placement Director at People and Places and co-founder of People and Places. Kate, tell us what are the greatest challenges and the greatest rewards of your job, your work? People. People provide both to me. I'll deal with the challenges first because I always like to get those out of the way and concentrate on the positives. So, the challenges are making sure that I and we understand enough about each other to create the right match, to make it really gel for both sides of this to make the volunteer feel genuinely appreciated and to know that they've done amazing work, albeit a tiny amount in something much bigger. And that the local community is also equally rewarded. T to do that, obviously, is kind of challenging. Um, there's also a, and I know this is going to sound repetitive, but there's a time scale challenge here. I occasionally get applications for from people who are travelling in Cambodia next week and would really like to do something useful while they're there. That's not going to be possible because we have not prepared either side properly. So I'm sorry, but I have to turn you down. Um, challenges locally are things like festivals, holidays, um, let's move the calendar, oh look the rice has been harvested, let's take a week off. When I have a volunteer already placed and scheduled to go, it's a real challenge when I have to find um, to fulfil their time properly, adequately, given that the goalposts have been moved. Moving goalposts are probably my biggest challenge. Moving goalposts, festivals, um, surely you know when the festivals are going to happen. One would think so. Um, we are so used in the, in, the, in the Western world, in the UK, to knowing, for example, our school terms years, well, certainly a, a year in advance. Um, so, one would assume that one can place a volunteer quite adequately and perfectly fitted within a school term in a particular environment. Um, Nepal, bit of a challenge, not going to work exactly the way we planned. Uh, that's one example. I could give you endless others, but frankly it would be repetitive. So how on earth do you prepare volunteers for this movable calendar? <laughs> the movable feast. The movable feast is something I alert all volunteers to from the very beginning. It's really important that everyone is flexible about this. We could give a volunteer a perfectly designed placement and tell them exactly what's going to happen at every minute of every day. That would be a lie. It simply wouldn't work because things happen, people happen, life changes. Life is in itself a movable feast, so no, we'll, we'll be able to be fairly accurate, but volunteers must have flexibility, adaptability, and be able to go with the flow. With the support, they're warned of this long in advance, obviously. With the support of our local partners, once they're there, the volunteer will definitely be looked after properly, and, and um, any fluctuations such as, for example, um, a, a teacher's strike in South Africa when, oops, the schools are closed, the local partner will deal with that. There are other places, other things that the volunteer can do which will still contribute to their overall input. And what about the greatest reward? Uh, that's also people. Um, the delight, one of the delights of my job is to read uh, reports from volunteers which follow on one from the other so you can see volunteers talking with each other they're they're 
in contact with each other before and after their placements. So there is this whole network of volunteers which just is fantastic. I, I get emails saying, oh I happened to see Mrs X the other day and we were talking about, or we've made arrangements to talk about our, our experience in Nepal. This is ongoing. People talk with each other all the time and that network is inspiring just by being able to be a fly on the wall and watch what we have achieved not only for volunteers but also for projects because we see that constant growth.